Welcome to this video. This video explains modeling of separation of two parts by cohesive contacts. The simulation of the peeling test of a polymer layer on the steel substance is illustrated. Please watch our next video for simulation of separation by cohesive elements. The problem is assumed plane stress and SI in millimeter units are used. In the part module we create two separate parts for the steel substrate and nylon layer. For both of the parts we use 2D planar, deformable, and shell feature. The steel is a rectangular part so in the sketcher environment, we create a rectangle by entering positions of its corners. Next we use the same setting to create the nylon part. At first we create a straight line of one side, then create a point for the center of its arc. Then we continue by creating the arc and align tangent to the arc. Finally, we fix the angle between two lines to be 60 degrees. Now we use offset to create the other side of the part. and connect two sides by these small lines. In the property module, we create a material for each part. Both of the part are linear elastic, and we enter Young modulus and Poisson ratio for each part. After that, we create a solid homogeneous section for each part and finally, assign the sections to the parts. In the next step, we enter both of the parts into the assembly module. The left side of the parts needs to be connected, so we translate the nylon layer from this point to this point. As usual, in step module we should define the type of the step which is static general. As we know that cohesive modeling contains damage initiation and evolution and convergence is not easy, we decrease the initial increment size and minimum increment size, and also increase the maximum number of increments. We also can request the CSDMG which shows the degradation of the connected surface. This value is 0 for perfect connection and 1 for complete separation. The main part of definition of the cohesive behavior by cohesive contact is done in interaction module using create interaction property. In this window we choose cohesive behavior from mechanical tab. Then, we need to choose between these three options. The first one is used to define cohesive behavior, not only for all nodes that are in contact at the start of a step, but also for slave nodes that may come in contact during the course of a step. The second one is used to restrict cohesive behavior to only those nodes that are in contact at the start of a step. By the third one we can restrict cohesive behavior to a subset of slave nodes which is defined when we specify initial bonded contact conditions. For the stiffness of the connection we can use default or specify stiffness coefficients. 
If we want that stiffness in the normal direction and shear stiffness in the plane of the contact be dependent, we toggle the uncoupled option on, otherwise we use coupled option. We choose uncoupled option, and then enter the stiffness in normal direction, and the shear stiffness is in two directions in the plane of contact. After defining the stiffness of the cohesive contact, we need to define its damage behavior. There are four different criteria for damage initiation prediction here. We will explain these criteria in our next videos. By choosing maximum stress criterion, here we can enter strength in normal direction, and the shear strengths in two planar directions. These strengths are used to predict initiation of damage. Please note that the unit of stress is megapascal. Then we define a damage evolution law for the connected parts. We toggle on energy type and use linear softening. Various criterion of mixed mode damage can also be used here. We should enter the fracture energy of the bonding. Adding stabilization to the damage behavior can lead to better convergence of the solution. The next step is to define interaction between two surfaces, so at first, we create the surfaces. Then we create an interaction between these two surfaces. Small sliding and surface-to-surface -surface contact with the defined interaction property are used for this interaction. In the load module, displacement of steel part is fixed in Y direction. Then displacement is applied to the end of the steel part in X direction. For the nylon layer we want to apply displacement parallel to its end. So using a different coordinate system can help us significantly. We create a datum coordinate system parallel to the nylon end. Then we can create a displacement boundary condition in this direction. In the mesh module from the mesh controls we choose the quadrilateral and structured mesh for both of the parts. Then to achieve a knit mesh it's better to create some partitions in the nylon layer. In fact, we want to separate the middle elbow segment from two straight segments of the part. Then, using global seed, we seed both of the parts. As the nylon part undergoes bending, it needs at least four elements across the thickness. The elements type is standard, linear, and plain stress.
Now we generate mesh for both of the parts. Up module, we create a job and submit it. In the visualization module we can see the separation of the nylon layer form the steel part. We can request and use required force for peeling test and compare it with experimental data. Thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos about mechanics and simulations.